How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job is one of those jobs I don't enjoy doing on components this expensive. So what we have here is an EX1200 excavator bucket cylinder rod that's come in because the nut has seized onto the rod when the customer was trying to disassemble it. This cylinder rod connects onto the bucket of the excavator and it is used to control the pitch of the bucket. So they are a high cycle cylinder and they are a high turnover cylinder which means they do get damaged just because of where they are on the machine and the environments they work in. The reason the customer was disassembling the cylinder is the piston seals had failed and it was bypassing internally which leads to loss of production. So it does have to be resealed in order to get it back up to a standard where it is being productive. And as you can see, the wear bands and the seals are basically non-existent. They have been obliterated. It's a good thing they caught it when they did because if it had actually blown the wear bands completely off the piston, the piston would have contacted the barrel and it would have been a lot worse. So the damage we're actually seeing on the piston, it is not caused from wear and tear. This was caused from a process called dieseling, which is where there is air trapped in the cylinder and it is cycled without bleeding the air from the system. And as the air rushes past all of those parts, it tears them apart. Just to replace the rod from the OEM is upwards of $20,000. The nut is $3,000. We are going to be gouging that off in order to try and salvage the cylinder rod. So when the customer was disassembling this, they did manage to undo the nut about 20 mil and then it locked solid. I went over there, we did then try to wind it back on just a little bit to see if it was just one area that had gone tight, but it consistently stayed tight for the little bit that we turned it. So rather than do any more damage, we stopped. So the nut being seized onto a cylinder rod, it is not very common, but it doesn't take much in order to start. What can cause that is a mix match between the threads or a tiny piece of swarf has broken free and got in between the nut and the rod. And that is all it takes to completely lock a nut onto a rod and gall the threads and destroy them. So I don't know what condition the threads are in, you can't actually see up inside there. Rather than do any more damage trying to tighten it back on or take it back off again, we're just gonna gouge the nut off to try and salvage the cylinder rod. The reason I'm gonna be using air arc to gouge the nut off is I do need to get up underneath the piston because the nut is actually encapsulated by the piston. You wouldn't try and do this with oxy or LPG because you would probably accidentally hit the piston or you might hit the rod. With air arc gouging you have a lot more control and you can be a real surgeon with it and just remove the material you're trying to remove without doing damage to anything else. Plasma gouging is one of those things that I would not be interested in getting involved in. The machine itself and the consumables is just far too expensive and you have no control with plasma. You can't really point it in a direction and just remove the material you want. You sort of pull the trigger and get what you get. So we're going to stick with what works best and just use air arc gouging. For those of you who don't know what air arc gouging is, air arc gouging is an electronic process of removing material very quickly. So what it is, is a power source. We have a 400 amp ideal arc in there and it is run on constant current. You attach your earth lead onto the job and then you use a handpiece on your positive lead coming out of your welder. That then attaches to your gouging carbon. They are just a carbon rod with a copper layer on them to help create the surface. Circuit. Carbon rods are available in many different sizes. You can get round carbons from, I believe, 6.5 mil we have here in Australia, up to 12 mil, and they can come either round or flat. So the flat carbon rods, they're generally used for just washing or wiping down a high area in order to flatten them out for grinding where the round carbons are used for penetrating and digging into something so you can then remove the weld. After you create the arc, the material becomes molten and there is air that runs through the handpiece out the side of the jaw that holds the rod and that air then blows down the side of the rod and blows away the molten material. And you can point the air jet and the rod pretty much anywhere you want. So they are quite versatile, but you do need to make sure you put the rod in the center of the jaw if you don't and the air jet is blowing off to the side of the rod, it doesn't actually work. All you end up with is a big mess. This handpiece does look very sad. I do need to put a new cheek plate on it. For what we're doing here today, it's going to be fine. They are very handy. They are very quick at doing the job, but they are extremely noisy. Because they do make such a mess, I do it outside. I don't like doing it in the workshop because it just blows molten material everywhere. So the rods I'm going to be using today, they are a six and a half mil gouging carbon. Although this is an extremely quick Quick process I am going to be taking my time and using a very small rod so I only remove exactly what I need to going in there with a larger diameter rod I do have the chance of the arc jumping away from where I'm trying to cut and I could actually cut into the rod itself we're going to take our time and do it properly
really see anymore. I just found the tips of the threads. So now that I've exposed the tips of the threads, I do need to come back into where the piston is and try and expose and wash underneath the piston so I can then hopefully drive a wedge in that gap and split the nut. It might not work, I might have to gouge the other side and actually take it out in two halves, but we'll get that out of the way, drive a wedge in there and see what happens. Started to split it. I'm having a few issues getting my wedge to actually lock itself into that groove I've made. These wedges are made out of a cutting edge, so they're about an AR500 grade material, so they're very hard, they don't deform. What I'm going to do is use a mild steel wedge because it will actually bite into the material and it won't actually allow it to release. So I should be able to drive it all the way in without it trying to pop out again. I think we have to split it all the way. Split it. Righto, so we've got one side split. I can't just open it up because it is still inside the piston. So I really need to split it into two halves in order to retrieve it. I've got a little bit more gouging to do on this side and then I'll try and wedge it open and then hopefully it'll just fall on the ground. So close. Oh, 
so close to coming out. Righto, so we've managed to get the nut to start to move again. Unfortunately, because it is tucked in underneath the piston, I can't get it out. I've sort of got to unscrew it in order to get it to clear the piston. So what I'm gonna do is open up this groove a little bit more and then I should be able to unscrew them by hand and pull them out of the way. Righto guys, so we successfully got the nut off. It did take a lot more than I thought it would, but because it was trapped inside the piston, it did make it very difficult in order to get it out so we could then split it. Now that the nut's off, we can really see what actually started this problem and the culprit to it all going wrong. So we have got one area of the thread that is basically just torn off and it has galled up the inside of the nut, so there was no hope of ever getting that off without destroying probably both parts. Unfortunately, I did touch one part of it with the gouging rod, but that's not really a big deal. So the next Next course of action will be set this up in the lathe and chase these threads but there is quite a lot of damage on the faces of the threads so trying to clean them up I'm probably going to undersize it a little bit because a nut has already bound up on this before the likelihood of it happening again after it's been undersized is very high so my recommendation will be machine off all these damaged threads put a new thread on the rod and make up a custom nut to suit this rod because these are a very high turnover rod they do get damaged and changed out quite often I'm not too worried about putting a non-genuine part back on the rod to keep it going. And it would actually be a cheaper option than the customer having to buy a genuine nut anyway.
it's, it's pretty simple. Right, oh, well, if you're all for that, we'll do it. Right, I'll talk to you. See you, mate. Bye. Righto guys, so I just spoke to the customer, he's in agreement with my recommendation. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this inside and get it set up in the lathe. Righto guys, so we've got the rod set up in the lathe. What I'm going to do now is machine off those damaged threads. I don't want to go too deep. I just want to remove enough material that I've got nice, clean, fresh surface to start with again. After I've got that cleaned up, that will then determine the diameter of the thread that we'll be putting back on the rod.
So I've taken a cut, it hasn't quite cleaned up just yet. I still have one little mark in there. It's measuring at 125.8. So I'm gonna machine it down to 125 mil. That will make it a much more of a standard size and it's gonna be easier to work out your major and your minor dimensions when I go to make up the new nut. Rather than it be something unusual, round numbers make it easy and simple so you don't make mistakes. We've machined down the damaged area. It came in at 125.01. I think that'll do. There is one little mark in it from where the gouging rod touched it, so it has created a little bit of a hot spot, but that's not gonna be an issue. We will be able to thread straight through that. There are other areas on this end of the rod that I will need to remachine. The reliefs on either side of the thread and the very end of the rod as well. So they are in scale with our new nut. But I'm not gonna machine any of that just yet. I would like to manufacture the new nut first. It'll be a lot easier to test a pre-made nut onto the rod as I'm machining it, rather than have to pull the nut out of the lathe, check it on the rod on the floor, put it back in the chuck, dial it back in, and then chase that thread. But I have to order in material for the nut, and I have been looking for an excuse to upgrade some of my tooling. That's gonna to take a couple of days to get that from my supplier. So you're just gonna to have to wait for part two. Thanks for watching. Best way to explain this. Oh fuck, I've already fucked that up. Does that sound right? That didn't make sense. Are oh, you ready? Yeah. Right. Ready? My head just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. <clears throat> Are you fucking serious? That was so just disjointed. Disjointed. Are you ready? Yep. Right, so the cost. Oh fuck me. Wait, fuck, what was I gonna say? Oh wait, how am I going now? Wait, how did my must done that? So I'm gonna mm, So I'm gonna machine it down to 125 mil. Fuck. Just restart that whole sentence. Fuck off. It's a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, where are we starting from? Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> need to stick up more. <laughs> there we go. You've got a new hat. I can't. I can't. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, hey, hey. Drop it. Give me that. No, wait. No, this isn't how it works. Homeless. Homeless. Drop. <laughs> there we go. No, that's not. Oh. 